So I just want to start by saying I think it's very interesting that two talks have uh, really come around a similar theme. Um, and uh, so it, hopefully this is a good follow-on to, to some of what you just heard. First of all, again, thank you everyone who has helped uh, make this possible. It is just phenomenal to see real people. Uh, you know, having been come into the Postgres community at large, being a part of Timescale for the last year and a half, during the pandemic has mean, you know, meant I've, I've met a lot of you virtually, and it's been super fun to actually shake your hand. So thank you for the efforts of everyone making this happen. It's been awesome. Um, so uh, we uh, you know, had the opportunity to do a quick keynote, and who wants to do the keynote? I said, hey, I'm happy to do a keynote, thinking that there was going to be a list of topics to choose from, and Tom said, no, what do you want to talk about? I said, oh, well, I love community, and I love trying to figure out how to enhance the community and what we're doing, and so, um, what was interesting to me is, and a number of you uh, that I've met know this, my background uh, is for many years of my database life was in SQL Server. I used Postgres back in 2000, 2001 uh, for some projects at university, and then uh, spent many years there. I came back into Postgres about three and a half years ago, um, and have you know, been learning the community as I've been going. So for me, um, you know, what happened, uh, oh, I guess this is the, I did forget this. <laughs> Who is Timescale? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Timescale is a Postgres extension uh, that deals specifically in time series database, although we're, we're doing a lot more than that as the company grows and as we do uh, more around analytics and trying to, to use the database for uh, not just, you know, it kind of we were originally known as the auto partitioning, right? So you can do partitioning based on time. We take care of all that for you. Uh, we have a lot of features built on top of those partitions. Uh, but we're doing a lot more with new, a new toolkit extension. That is, you may have seen some of the blog posts on things like functional uh, SQL, things of that nature. So some really fun stuff. Uh, if you're interested at all, please come talk to us. We love the community. We're really trying to do as much as we can to support uh, the growth and one of the reasons we're sponsoring. So December 1st, uh, 2020, exactly one year ago, was a pivotal moment in uh, Postgres time, maybe. Uh, Babelfish was announced. For those of you who didn't know, it's already been discussed a couple times. Right? So AWS said, hey, we see some value here. And uh, we, you know, we know there's a, a financial position here for them. Uh, they're not a sponsor, so I feel like I can say that. Um, but there's, there's a reason, right? There, for some reason, the, they saw a value opportunity to create a plugin that could allow a SQL Server application to talk to Postgres transparently, right? And so the hope is that you can uh, take your, whatever it is, your application, you simply redirect it to, uh, you know, a, a Babelfish-enabled Postgres instance, and it just keeps working. Well, I, I mean, that was interesting to me, but for me as an as a old SQL Server user, it just sent off a thousand alarm bells, like, you know, ORM on super steroids and we all know how hard using RRMs can be, right? This is a huge, huge problem. Like you can't just magically point, but they're selling this as, you know, the, the hope is it's gonna be all rainbows, right? Like, uh, you know, unicorns and rainbows, everyone's gonna be happy. And uh, so it's been something I've been watching for the last year, like what's this really gonna end up being? And so it was uh, released recently. I had an opportunity, uh, you know, I think uh, Anders and some others uh, had a call uh, a couple weeks ago and I joined the, the video call to look at it for the first time. And as a SQL Server user, it's like, okay, this is kind of interesting. I wonder what does and doesn't work. Now, why? You know, so for me, one of the questions is why SQL Server? So I, I pulled this off, whatever you feel about DB engines or not, um, you know, there is some correlation. Obviously, they're taking Google searches and Twitter searches and all kinds of stuff. And so there's, there's one database that stands out on this chart over the last eight or nine years, and that happens to be Postgres, right? There is continued interest. It's exactly what we've been talking about. The reality that there's a huge amount of power here. And so harnessing that power, and if you take those top three, there's one of them that seems to be losing traction a little bit faster than the others. So in the spirit of you know, old hunting days, you go after the weakest animal, right? And so um, maybe that's one of the, the reasons to think this through. Uh, you know, maybe that's why they did it. But however you think about Babelfish, whether this is going to be a turning point or not in bringing people into the community, whether it's kind of a, a red heron who cares, it would die off eventually, is it gonna be included in, in, in core at some point? I have no idea. But the cat's out of the bag, right? The interest has been, what's that? I said I have an idea. Okay, man. <laughs> but the cat's out of the bag, right? And so um, the reality is, and I can tell you, Again, because so much of my, uh, many of my relationships come from the SQL Server side of things, they're now being drawn in. They, there are people who are now wanting to know, what is this about? 
And is this something that's going to affect me in the next two to three years? And there's some real concern of trying to figure out what that looks like. In fact, I thought it was interesting, just two days ago, uh, Deep Beaver, who's a very, it's a very popular community tool, some of you might use as an IDE, they just released this. We, I don't even know what a Babelfish connector is because it's supposed to just be Postgres. So I, I'm not sure what that was, but I thought that was funny. Like, okay, this is, it's gaining traction wherever it goes. So I've said, you know, it's important to me because if you were to do word cloud in my database experience over the last 25 years, a significant portion of it has been SQL Server. I've done, you know, I've, I've done a lot with Postgres. I've done a long time ago, a lot with MySQL. I actually used DB2 once and that was a horrible experience. Um, but you know, we've been around. And so I have, uh, I have an affinity and I have a desire to see the transition happen well, uh, if, if and when it happens. So I have a question for you and this will be the uh, audience participation portion of the keynote. When is the last time you had to join a community? So think about that. And now my question is, when I asked you that question, how many of you immediately thought of a technical community? Yeah, I mean, a fair, a fair number of us, right? Like, what's the last new technology I had to use and I had to figure out how to use it, right? Not everyone, but there's a lot there. How did you feel? Did you feel like the community was ready to embrace you no matter what happened? You had a, a bunch of cheering fans ready to help you be successful, uh, you know, helping you, uh, you know, as you were doing new little things, uh, cheering you on? Or did you kind of feel like the person on the outside looking in? Not really sure how to get number one on the inside crowd or how to actually get the help you needed. You, you know you need to succeed, but you couldn't really figure out what that looked like. Regardless of which side you're on, how could you have made that experience better? Right? If you were the one that, this is a great experience. I ended up at a conference early on. I met new people. It made me successful. It, it gave me the opportunity to do something well. Okay, so does that mean we need to figure out as, as, as we get back to these kinds of things, how can we make this more accessible to more people? If you were on the other side and you still maybe don't quite feel like you belong, what would make that better? Is it more documentation? Is it more events like this? Is it better access to people? Is it just a better way to get help, you know, to, to know how to communicate? What about the SQL Server community? Oh, listen to me. Oh, man. Whew. Sorry, word cloud. What about the Postgres community? How can we do this better? Now, it's important to me um, for a couple reasons. So uh, some of you know we have tried uh, the last couple of years, Timescale has done a state of Postgres survey. Uh, as the company now has more support and people to do this, this is something we hope to do every year as well. Uh, so this last year we had 500 respondents. Uh, we'd love to have uh, you know, more participation as years go by. I mean, this makes sense, right? Uh, literally, when I went and looked, 49.5% of the respondents were fairly new to Postgres and 50.5%. So it's 50-50 split, right? So it makes sense that we'd get that kind of, that's just life, right? That's, that's what you're going to end up with. The thing that was interesting to me, and again, I think this makes sense, and it's something we need to be thinking about now rather than when more people come in and have a lot more frustration. For those that were less experienced with Postgres, the comments tended to be not negative, just there's things I wish that could be done better, you know, better visibility and community resources. Uh, docs seem to be written at a level that is, you know, assuming a lot about your knowledge of, of databases and so forth. Whether you agree with these or not, it was just interesting that it was usually the people that had less experience. And as would expect, the longer someone's in the community, their experience gets better, right? So, Hey, dedicated to uh, Postgres over the long haul, knowledgeable, everyone's accessible, strong desire to do things properly, right? But it took time to get there. And so one of the goals is to figure out how do we get people's experience from, I need to be here for five or six years before I start to feel that, to I can be here for one or two years and start to feel like I'm, I know what's going on and I know how to be a part of this community. So I, I care because my role at Timescale right now is, is developer advocacy, right? It's not anything I've done until now. I love uh, developers, I love community. I want to bring this, uh, this is Eon. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's something that's important and, I, and I, I feel like it's good to think about how to do this stuff ahead of time. Now, is SQL Server the thing that matters? I'm not saying that it is. I'm saying that's a good learning opportunity for me because I do know that there is uh, there are people that will be coming into this community who are uh, 
you know, hard workers, they love the technology, they want to su succeed well, and they're trying to figure out how to make that happen. So uh, this was a conversation I had a little bit over a year ago, uh, not long after um, Babelfish was announced. And so again, does this, do any of you here know who Brent Nozar is? Probably not. Uh, maybe a few of you, great, good, Brent's a good guy. Um, you know, SQL Hash help tag, you know, what about SQL Saturdays? Whether or not these things matter to you, it is a form of community that has been really enmeshed in that SQL Server community, and honestly, I cannot tell you in the last year how many times I've seen Reddit, Twitter, Stack Overflow, uh, name them, questions almost verbatim of this. I need to learn Postgres now. Where's, who's the brand knows our Postgres? I mean, it's just like over and over. Like, oh, okay, there's something here people have been conditioned for, and I, I want to figure out how we can make that better. And here's the real reason why. This is what the Babelfish project is never going to amplify, right? This is the limitations page. I don't know if you can tell because I don't have my clicker. Can you see the scroll bar at the top, how small that is? Okay, this is a huge page. And as a former SQL Server developer, I can tell you many of the things listed on this page as limitations are like primary needs. This is not something that just magically is gonna work out of the box right now, right? And there's a lot of effort. Sure, I can do a to-do app. I can show you a thousand to-do apps, but to actually pour my app and, and make this thing work, it's just, it, we're a long ways away, but I might not have the choice. I'm gonna fi have to figure out how to make that happen. In fact, I love that they're upfront about it, right? This is the paragraph at the top. You will never get 100% compatibility. Well, of course you can't, but it kind of feels like maybe we're, we're selling a different product. So what does that mean? It means it's gonna fall on us. It's gonna fall on this community. And I know that this community, exactly because of what we've just talked about uh, in, the, in the other two presentations, right? Because it's a strong database, more people come, because it's open source, we can't control what happens, right? We can't. But there's still a need within the larger community to figure out how to support those that are coming. So what I wanna talk about is a couple options, maybe some ideas as we move ahead, uh, some experiences I've had specifically with the SQL Server community that were helpful for me, and maybe it's something we could try in a couple of ways, and I'll have a little call to action at the end. We have two options how we can approach this next new wave, whatever that is. We can approach it as, you know, Postgres SQL Server, warring sides, who's, which side are you on, and, and go like that. Or we can sit down at the table, have some shawarma, shawarma, I can never say that word, anyway. Um, and, and figure out, you know, where we can overlap, where we can help one another um, succeed better, right, than individually. Or, I thought this was interesting. Uh, I am, my family has always been a homeschooling family, so the pandemic was not uh, particularly new for us. Uh, so in typical homeschooling fashion, I thought, well, wait a second, Postgres is an elephant. How do elephants work? Well, it turns out the elephants are very communal, right? They are very much about taking care of, now, they are also maternally led, uh, which I didn't know, that was very cool. Um, but the, they will accept orphans. They will make sure that every member of that community is taken care of. Um, no one's left out on their own, which is uh, really interesting to me. So here are five quick things to discuss. Uh, just opportunities, maybe things to think about. So number one is lead with empathy and curiosity, and what do I mean by that? What I mean is um, expect confusion from people that are actual SQL users, right? They've been doing this for uh, their whole career, but they're confused. And I'll show you in a second one, one really simple example. Oops, uh, I thought there were five points. Remember that uh, we were a newbie once, right? Even in a new technology, uh, even when you're experienced, what it feels like to not really understand how to make, make something happen. And, and assume that they really have tried to figure it out. I'll show you an example in a second of one way to approach it. Um, and maybe prepare some resources ahead of time. And this is where I'd like to maybe ask for some help. Here's a really quick example. Uh, in fact, when I was on the call uh, with, with the folks a couple weeks ago looking at Babelfish, I thought it was interesting and I forget who was driving and I apologize for that. Uh, his first comment was, this is actually kind of cool. I can just declare variables and do work right inside of, of T-SQL. Like, I didn't have to do anything. And so coming from, from SQL Server, this is how every script I've ever known works. It's just, you just do work in your script. You don't have to declare functions and code blocks. And so I can't tell you how much of a struggle it was to know that I had to look up this thing called an anonymous code block, anonymous function. Like, oh! I can do it, but it's just like, it's a term I didn't know to go look up, right? And it took me quite a while to figure that out. Are there ways that we can make that easier? Lower the entry, uh, you know, the bar for entry level help. So in the SQL Server community, uh, they're, they've been very successful. Like 13 years ago, someone started Twitter on Twitter saying, I have this idea. Let's have a hashtag called SQL help. Now, I will tell you, 
Now as a Postgres user, I'm a little bit frustrated at how it, it is gate kept a little bit, and it's a little bit frustrating. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but there's no one on this hashtag that has Postgres experience. Uh, not much, I would say. It's, it, they, people will ask, sometimes people will help. They're not like, get away. It's like, it's just not the people helping. Um, uh, Robert Treat, I don't know if you're here. There you go. He has tried to get the PG help hashtag started once or twice. I haven't seen it. Is there an opportunity here? The, the thing to note, uh, it's hard to see in the screenshot, but here's five questions from maybe a week ago. Two of them have no answers. There's no expectation, right? People ask, you don't have to, but maybe it's, a, it's a, an opportunity to do something. And it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, every, this is one of the first questions I asked maybe five years ago. And it was a bad question and I got a funny response and then the guy went on and helped me. He's like, look, I can't help you until you give me more information, right? So could SQL help maybe help in some way, bring some people in? Support uh, and cultivate new leadership. So here's one thing that um, the SQL community has done, again, for about 12 years. They have a monthly blog fest called T-SQL Tuesday, started by community members. And the exact, re I mean, the reason they started it was to actually develop new leaders within the community. It wasn't for self-promotion. It was more people need to blog about this technology because the more we can share our resources, the better off everyone's going to be. And it's now 13, 12 years strong. They have you know, 150 weeks or something under their belt. Of, uh, and some months, there's 30 people that blog. And some months, there's two. And basically, it's just a community call. Who wants to host this month? You create a topic. And then the only thing you are agreeing to do is at the end of the day or at the end of the week, at some point soon after, you create a blog post, which is an aggregate of what everyone blogged about, just links to get to their stuff. Really, I can tell you that some of the, uh, the leaders within that community now started blogging six, seven years ago as part of T-SQL Tuesday, and they had an opportunity to be a part of this community. Seek leaders proactively. If you go to Twitter and you type in SQL family, again, I'm not, for some reason they've been co-opted. Uh, it, it just is what it is. You will see daily chat of sometimes 10 to hundreds of tweets among the SQL Server community, and they really, uh, they, they care for one another. I mean, they really are talking about their experiences being at conferences together. So that community is really strong, and they have some great leaders. The, uh, this is an example of a DBA tools is a PowerShell toolkit that will help you migrate, you know, clusters of servers with one or two commands. Completely community-led. Uh, they have, you know, I don't know how many contributions here, but these are some really excellent people that as the need starts to rise, I have no doubt that you could find some people that want to contribute to new tooling that would help within this community. So they're available and maybe it's an opportunity to start to draw some of them in in some way. And finally, this one is probably, you know, I, again, don't hate me for anything I say. I, I'm just trying to learn as well, right? I realize that even thinking about this, sometimes I'm not sure how to contribute, even within Postgres. One thing that I know has always been difficult for me, even as a user for a number of years and as a new user, is going to something like the community page, knowing that um, there are lots of opportunities, but I don't exactly know where to start, right? And some, some of them are more friendly than others, and that's just life, right? There's a lot of things, but again, uh, in the, within the community, there's been a number of people that are respected, something like Brent Ozar, who says, hey, if you want help, here's the best way to do it. Here are the five different resources. This is good for this, this is good for this, this is good for this. Is there a way to, to enhance even the website uh, in some way that would help direct that, those, the resources a little bit better? Um, and I'm sure that's something I could help contribute with. Any of us could. I don't know how. So come talk to me and I'll figure out if I can, can do that. So the, I'll finish by saying this. You know, the adage goes, you can't select your family, you can't pick your family, but you really can influence who's going to become your friend, right? So this community is going to grow. We're all talking about it. We know that there's a, a lot of good to be had here. Um, there is a reason why more and more companies and people are jumping on this bandwagon, as it were. We want to make it the most welcoming community we can because we're all going to win because of it. If, you, if any of this is interesting to you, if you want to maybe try any of these things, I would love help figuring out. I, I don't think by myself I'm going to be able to do it, right? If a few of us band together, we might be able to do something like a blog fest and give it a try, something of that nature. Reach out to me. This is how you can find me. I'll be here for the next two days. Um, and uh, we will be doing the State of Postgres survey uh, th again this coming year. We'd love to have 1,000 or more people submit it. You know, let's get to 1,000, 2,000 and learn more about how we can use Postgres better. Thanks so much for the opportunity to talk to you guys.